Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Get a party going, let's get a party going. When it's not a party, we will always party out. Well, the title kind of says it all, doesn't it? And if it didn't, that poster sure clinches it. Office Christmas Party tells the story of a failing data storage company whose leadership decides to throw the biggest wildest hurrah that they possibly can in order to land that one big client whose business could save everyone's job. Now why they attempt to secure a multi-million dollar contract by making the entire company get hammered and act like total jackasses, well, it's um, unclear. Best not to think too much about it. In fact, best not to think too much about the plot in general, because plots require conflict to work. And the central conflict here, the evil hag from corporate who prohibits the staff from throwing the party in the first place and threatens the office with closure, played by Jennifer Aniston, breezes into the film in the opening passages, then disappears for the majority of the rest of the film, providing the protagonists no real opposition as they plow forward with their increasingly dangerous, costly, and generally ill-advised party plans. There are some half-hearted attempts to inject some sort of statement about corporate culture and cutthroat business ethics affecting the livelihoods of real hard-working people, but it's difficult to paint the workers here as sympathetic victims by the end after we've seen the depths of their depravity. There's a few subplots that get the characters entangled with a criminal element and the development of a new technology by one of the employees played by Olivia Munn that occasionally crops up to pretend like the filmmakers might have been actually telling you a story this entire time, but the effect is never really convincing. It's about a wild office Christmas party. That's it, full stop. So now that that's out of the way, how was office Christmas party? Eh, uh, it was, uh, it was, you know, it was fine. Perfectly fine and pleasant the whole time. Not offensive, not bad, pretty uh, amusing, but only a few times did I laugh out loud, and all of those occurred in the second half of the film, after you just sort of give yourself over to the fact that yes, this really is all there is to it. And frankly, from this cast of comedy heavyweights, I'd have expected a lot more. Jennifer Aniston is great as the heavy, and T.J. Miller, in actually a huge surprise for me, is the biggest source of heart in the movie. As the corporate vice president that literally cares about nothing more than keeping his employees happy and employed, despite not having the best ideas on how to do so, I really felt for this guy. And Miller takes that ball and runs with it. Also of note, Jillian Bell turns in another one of her scene-stealing comedic performances after the night before 22 Jump Street, and it looks like she's gonna be one of the best parts of the upcoming fist fight. Now she's great, and I hear she's finally going to get her own starring vehicle soon in a gender-swapped remake of Splash, and I really can't wait for that. The best parts of Office Christmas Party are when you get Miller and Bell in the same scene together. Oh, and uh, Fortune Feimster has a pretty great cameo as an Uber driver. The CEO of Xenotech, please just drive. I just dropped off four people there at that party tonight. They gave me three stars like a bunch of bitches. What did you just say? I said they were a bunch of bitches. Everyone else in this cast, and what a deep cast of comedic talent. Well, they're just kind of okay. Like Jason Bateman and Olivia Munn, they just play off their natural likability and charisma, and that's sort of enough, I guess. And Kate McKinnon and Vanessa Bayer of SNL use their sketch comedy talents to create one-note, sticky characters, and they kind of work too. It's all just fine and amusing, but nothing special. The best laughs and gags are in the trailer. It's my birthday. Ah. Uh. Really committing, that's nice. But in the end, it's an amusing night out, I guess. Especially if you're in one of those theaters that serves alcohol and you can get an Uber home. You know, just make sure you give your driver five stars or else. Look, I guess I'm gonna give uh, Office Christmas Party a uh, medium bag of popcorn. Sure, it's a lot of wasted talent on something that's not nearly as hilarious as, say, The Hangover or Christmas Vacation, but hey, it's not terrible. It's got a bunch of people you like and it's fun being in their company for a couple of hours and occasionally you will get a good laugh. Plus, if you're looking for a comedy to see in theaters this week, I mean, let's see, uh, I don't even think there are any other comedies in theaters right now. Like I said, there are no other comedies in theaters right now. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Office Christmas Party in the comments as well. Specifically, did you laugh more than I did? In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I like to party. I like, I like to party. I like to party.